So here's a table that I've created and you can replicate what I'm doing at home on your computer because all the data that I use is data that you can access with the Gapminder package. Right, let me show you an example of a table that I created and some of the features. So as you can see, you can sort the variables using these sort functions. You can also filter them. These are numeric variables or you can sort categorical variables. You can export whatever it is that you've created down there using as a PDF, Excel, CSV, or you can just copy the data. All of this is available to your audience and this can be exported as a web page, but also importantly, it can be inserted into a Quattro document, and I'm going to talk you through that right now. So here is that same table sitting on a web page. In this case, I built the web page in R Studio. Okay, R Studio has a feature called Quarto. Quarto lets you build pages like this. I've got a whole course on that on learnmore365.com and I've got videos on YouTube on that as well if you're interested. But nevertheless, it doesn't have to be a Quarto built page. You can export your table on as a web page or insert it onto a web page and it has all of this interactivity, which I think is fantastic. I think this is the way data should be displayed. Your audience should be able to control uh, what it is that they see and how it is that they interact with your data. I think this is amazing. Right, what's nice about this is I have the code that I used to create this table and I'm going to walk you through this code and you might be saying, oh, wouldn't it be nice for me to have that code? You want to copy this? No problem. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how it is that you can access the page that I'm looking at right now. You can copy this code. There's a little copy function right there. Stick it straight into our studio. And I also have little annotations here. So uh, next to each of the lines of code, I explain what it is that I've done there and you can go through it step by step and do this at home uh, in your own time. Okay, just uh, just so that you know, all of this is sitting on a page here uh, called Interactive Tables and that'll be available at learnmore365.com. Uh, I'll talk you through how to get there at the end of the video. On this page, I walk through really step by step about like installing the DT package and calling it as a library. Um, and let me, I'll go through some of this actually right now quite quickly, and then I'll go in detail through the code that I used to create the table that you saw at the bottom. Right, just in the first instance, this is the function data table, and into that function, the first argument is the data set that you're wanting to turn into this kind of interactive data table. And if that's all you do, you land up with a really nice, well, I mean, it's not very fancy, but it is, everything is uh, sortable by the various columns. Next, if you want to add a filter right at the top, look at these. These are filters that you can filter the data with and we can make the data set smaller. You use this argument filter equals and you, you say top if you want it at the top and bottom if you want it at the bottom. Now, interestingly, with this data, the thing that I'm trying to show you here is that data table as a package.